Hey everybody, they really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Hakuogi Kyoto Wins. We are trying to chase after Sana, though we are still on the common route. And could be for quite a while, I have no idea when it actually switches over. I believe we're in chapter 3 right now. And Ito has joined the gang and ruined everything! Thanks a lot, Heisuke, for bringing him in. Let's see how we deal with things. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. The consensus was that Ito was not to be trusted, and it seems no one spoke in his defense. Only one, during all of this, quietly sipped his tea. Um... Saito quietly looked up at me as I poured more tea into his cup. Uh, um, so, what do you think about Ito? I mean, about Ito joining, that is. As an organization grows, it will expand to include people who have different ideas and points of view. And so then... However, if one attempts to force this sort of diversity, then the organization will begin to rot from within. His words hung in the air, a dark omen for the future of the Shinsengumi. It was considerate of Ito to join, but his presence seemed to be a recipe for dissension, if not outright disaster. Ah, that's the really hard thing about rereading, too, is because I know stuff. It's like, I guess I don't really want to ruin it for people who might be listening for the first time, and I hope I haven't already said things that ruined the story for you guys. But, uh, yeah, I have a really hard time resisting, you know, complaining about the jerks when they pop up. <laughs> the setting sun glowed through the windows with a warm, rich maroon. An ominous kind of beauty. It's cold. I came into the courtyard, and my body stopped due to the cold. Guess spring will take a while. <sighs> I wasn't too fond of Ito, but it was Sanin and his condition that truly worried me. I really wish his arm would just heal. That arm, or perhaps more accurately, the lack of it, was the source of his change in personality. Still, as nice as it would be for Sanin's arm to simply start working again, that seemed like the stuff of a child's fable, not real life. Well, has anybody tried therapy, both physical and mental? And that was when I remembered. If push comes to shove, he'll have to take it. I don't think Sanan's just going to give up. Don't jinx it, Soji. It's going to look bad if officers start joining the Furies. Okita was talking about the Shinsengumi having some secret serum back in the day. Judging from how they spoke of it, it's an item with circumstances. But... And I was not to know about the existence of that serum. If I were to look into it without approval, there was no doubt that I'd be punished. Possibly with death? But I'm the daughter of a doctor. I'm pretty sure I had more knowledge on medicine than the men of the Shinsengumi did. I... Oh dear. Oh dear. I have to investigate, which is so totally unwise, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to muster the courage to look into this. But where should I investigate? My room is in the Yagi house. There are some rooms that I'm not allowed to enter, but the captains live here as well and I'd finally learned how to navigate the building. However, there was another building that was part of the headquarters for the Shinsengumi, aside from the Yagi House. Some of the leaders, along with the warriors, live in the Maikawa House diagonal from Yagi. And Sanan, who's injured, has been holed up in the Nambu residence, located behind Yagi. Since it's a residence, one cannot just stroll there casually, and since it's barely used by anyone other than Sanan, it's a little isolated. Hmm... If there are secrets being kept from me, then they had to be kept in a place I'd never think to check. If I were to look into it, it would be either in the Forbidden Areas or the Yagi Residence. What should I look into? I shall look into... The Yagi House. It was night at the Yagi House and dead silent. I tiptoed down the halls as quietly as possible. What did I say? It never works when I try to be a ninja. Never, ever. Huh? Were my ears playing tricks on me? Or did someone just walk into the common room? Uh, I would be in trouble if someone saw me, so I did my best to blend into the shadows and hide. Again, not a ninja. After a few moments of heart-pounding seclusion, my curiosity got the best of me. I departed my hiding place and crept toward the common room. I peered inside. Inside was Sanin. I wonder why. Something felt 
wrong. I just stood there. What is Sanan doing here late at night? I was at a loss. Should I speak to him, or... Before I could make up my mind, he turned. I never thought it would be you who would catch me. How unexpected. Sanan gazed directly at me and muttered, You're out there, aren't you, Yukimura? Come out. I guess he spotted me. I gave up and made myself visible to Sanin. I'm sorry if it seemed like I was snooping or watching what you were doing. Well, I don't plan on scolding you. I mean, if you see a suspicious shadow in the middle of the night, of course you'd be curious. Unwisely so. Uh, it was very subtle, but I noticed something was off in Sanin's attitude. He had a peaceful smile, something I hadn't seen for what seemed like ages. It was a bit too peaceful, as if his worries had suddenly left him. It was an expression I have never seen since he'd gotten injured. Um, Sanin? Did something good happen? Why, yes, something did. Or rather, I guess I finally made up my mind. Something swished in his hand. Um, Sanin? What is that? You're wondering what this is, I imagine. Well, I did ask you what it was. After his cryptic reply, he showed me what was in his hand. Sanin was holding a small bottle, made from fine idro. The glass was filled with a crimson liquid that looked like a poisonous chemical to me. Looks like blood to me. This is a secret treatment, developed by your father Kodo, under orders from the Shogunate. What? The Shogunate ordered my father to do something? They say it first appeared out of the West, the contents of this tiny vial, and utterly transform a person. Well, what do you mean by utterly transform? To put it simply, it makes them stronger, and heightens their recuperative abilities. Uh, it sounded like something out of a fairy tale. If such a thing were to truly exist, the serum could be considered a miracle cure, but... There is, however, a rather serious flaw. His smile twisted only a little. I suppose you could say it was too strong. It worked as advertised, but drove his patients mad. You've seen the results yourself, haven't you? Uh... Of course, I'd seen the results of that madness the first night I met the Shinsengumi. Okita and Saito had killed off that monster with the white hair. Your assumptions are correct. Yes, those warriors you met are of that ilk. They were no longer capable of what Mum might call rational thought, and were little more than bloodthirsty monsters. His words brought a sharp chill down my spine. How horrible! If they lose control whenever they see blood, then they're hardly much use in battle, aren't they? As unkillable as they may be. Kodo conducted experiments on the core during the development of his treatment. No! My father? Conducting experiments on human beings that made them go mad at the sight of blood? I couldn't believe it! No, I didn't want to believe it. But there was no reason for Sanin to lie either. I saw it before my very eyes. Then, did my father really... Sanin shrugged off my disbelief and continued. Unfortunately, when he disappeared, his research was put on hold. This vial here represents the fruits of my own personal research, based on what he left behind. He smirked and shook the bottle gently. The liquid inside sloshed from side to side, almost lazily. I diluted it as much as possible. Uh, I had so many questions to ask him, but I didn't even know where to start, so I simply spoke the first thing that came to mind. If you drink that, will you be okay? So that serum, will it prevent you from going mad? To be quite honest, I'm not entirely sure. I've never tested it on anyone. Why? Why wouldn't you test it on someone before you use it yourself? His smile faded. If I take this, my arm will be healed. Assuming, of course, I've mixed it correctly. You mean, you're actually considering taking it? He had no guarantee that it wouldn't simply kill him outright, and even if he did survive, it might well drive him insane. Sanin, please reconsider this. I'm sure there's some other way. You don't need to rely on that. I have no choice. This is the only way to heal this damn arm. 
I'm already useless here. Even the men have begun to speak ill of me behind my back. That's your own fault. You will never understand me. I came all the way to Edo alongside my comrades and my thought were behind me. And now I'm left here, given a position out of pity and left to wallow in my own uselessness. How could you say it's pity? You're a leader here. The Shinsugumi respects and needs you now more than ever. Sanin's eyes dotted with melancholy, flashing a brief smile to entertain the idea behind my words. Ah, yes, I remember it well. I am a swordsman of the Shinsengumi, yes? And I am not useless, right? Sanin seemed bitterly focused on the words Hidikata said earlier. They really did affect him. There is no life for me as a swordsman. You're asking me to continue in some sort of undeath. Let me die as a person as well. No! It's not decided that it will fail. The odds against success aren't as terrible as you think. Sanin smiled as he said that, but there was no way to know what might happen to him. Considering the worst that could happen, I couldn't sit by and allow him to do this. I... Persuade him. I still don't think you should take that serum. There's a high chance that it'll fail, right? If the others knew that you were here doing this, they would all try and stop you. I'm sure Toto would be greatly disappointed. He is a good man. I thought at first he was beginning to reconsider, but my faint hope was shattered with words of resignation. Well then, if I should die, please give my regards to Toto. W what? <laughs> I really am in hell now, to be pitied even by the likes of you. Those were his last words. He suddenly gulped down the red liquid stored in the bottle of fine Idro. No! The bottle slipped from Sanin's hands and crashed into a thousand tiny bits on the floor. A scarlet drop oozed down from the corner of his lip. <laughs> Sanin crumbled to the floor. Sanin! <sighs> I paused, uncertain. He groaned in agony and pulled his hand back to grip his chest over his heart. It's clear he was suffering. Hang in there. I'll go get someone right now. I took a step forward, about to place my hand gently on his back. Ah! His right arm whipped out, almost too fast to see, and threw me across the room. I slammed into the wall and slid to the floor. I could barely breathe. <sighs> my vision went blurry for a moment. I coughed once and looked up. Just in time to see Sanin land on top of me, his hands already reaching for my throat. <laughs> his right arm reached for my throat and he relentlessly started to choke me the hands around my throat were Sanin's but the man behind them was someone else his silver white hair glistened in the dim light his bright maddening red eyes showing through his bangs I knew those eyes his eyes were the eyes of a predator not a man I saw eyes just like that the night I arrived in Kyoto. Those creatures in the alley drenched in blood. Monsters. As he choked me, I desperately tried to keep breathing. No, this wasn't the monster. This was Sanin. He was still the man I knew. So, then... Suddenly, the fingers around my neck loosened. <laughs> Had he just let me go? I crumbled to the floor and I gasped for air, through a throat still red with his handprint. My tearful eyes caught sight of Sanin, whose hair now shined and white brightly. Well, I... I see I failed then. Perhaps I'm not as lucky as I thought. In the depths of those red eyes, there was a faint sign of reason. Sanin, are you back? Yukimura, I have a favor to ask you. Please, kill me while you have the chance. What? His words weren't registering in my head, and I could do nothing but look into his eyes. I failed. I can already feel my mind starting to go. At this rate, I will kill you. No! In this moment, memories of when I first arrived in Kyoto and of the Ikeda incident flashed before me. I witnessed so many deaths in this time. I came to terms with the idea that, for a member of the Shinsengumi, death is a constant. 
but never could I imagine taking someone's life. Most of all, Sanin's. No, I can't. I couldn't do that. I mean, you're still you, Sanin. What is this before me? Is this beauty? In spite of everything, you have faith. Even so, show the mercy of death so that I may pass. Sanin shouted at me and grabbed my collar. What? I could see his red eyes flickering. Sanin struggled with his remaining willpower to fend against the madness boiling inside of him. If you don't kill me, then you will die. I know you're only here by chance, and I feel... I am sorry that I must ask you to do this. I am so, so sorry. His right hand slid off my throat, and I felt it land on the hilt of my sword. Huh? What is he doing? As I stood there confused, Sanin's fingers wrapped around the handle and began to pull. Oh no! No! Too late, I realized what he meant to do, and I felt ice creep up my spine. Sanin, please! You can't! I tried with all of my might to pry his arm away and prevent it from drawing my sword, but... It's made the task much harder, but a blade in my heart will kill me as dead as any other man. I can't! Kill... me. He spoke in starts and stops now, as tendrils of madness began to pull him under. P please let me die. My sword was now completely drawn, and he pointed it toward his breast over his heart. Sanin! Just as the white shining tip of the blade was about to pierce his heart, yeah! Sanin screamed in anguish, dropping the sword he was gripping. Sanin? What just happened? <laughs> When I ran toward him, Sanin collapsed to the floor. Sanin! Hang in there! Sanin! I ran over to him and rushed to check his pulse. He's still breathing. He only lost consciousness. This alone gave me a great feeling of relief, but suddenly the door behind me slid open. I rushed to look back when... Chizuru, Sanin. Okita. S sanin he he's Okita had a cold expression. Let me get a good look at him. His eyes narrowed, and I saw them flick around the room, from Sanin's limp body to myself to the shattered vial. Okita's mouth tightened, and he bent down to lift Sanin off the floor. When you drink that stuff, supposedly your body just can't handle it. It hurts like hell when you start to lose it. He probably couldn't take it and just passed out. Oh... After finding that it wasn't life-threatening, I felt a pang of relief. Well, the real painful part comes later. We can't afford for Sonny to die just yet, so make sure he hangs in there. His tone was surprisingly detached, considering the circumstances, and Okita picked up Sonny before leaving the room. Once they left, I collapsed to the floor out of supreme exhaustion and slumped into myself. <sighs> I finally tapped into the secrets of the Shinsengumi. For so long, it was kept from me, and now their forbidden secrets were revealed. My mind went blank due to confusion and fear, but I knew what I saw. And what are they going to do about it? After Sanin collapsed, the captains rushed into the room. They must have heard the commotion from the common room. Everything glowed white after, and I realized that I was in a daze, None of their words stuck in my ear, and I wobbled back to my room. Seriously? You can be a real pain, you know that? Okita had taken me back to my room, and I heard him as soon as he opened the door for me. It's time for you to explain what went on last night. Why were you in there with Sanin? Okita was never particularly pleasant to me, but his tone was even harsher than usual. I felt like there was someone in the common room. I was curious, so I had a look. I found Sanin in there. I see. Okita's lackadaisical response seemed disarming, and he just scanned me. Um... Although my mind had cleared somewhat, it was still difficult to keep my thoughts organized. One, however, rose quickly to the surface. Is it true that my father had something to do with that? That stuff Sanin drank? Did Sanin tell you that? Yes, he said it makes you stronger, but it drives you mad. He fixed his eyes wearily on the ceiling above us, sighing before eventually answering my question. You are the daughter of the man that made that stuff. 
And you see what happens to the men who go crazy. Well, I suppose you do have a right to know. It'd be easier to just kill you, but... Oh well. <laughs> Thank you so much for going through the trouble of explaining instead of killing me. His manner of speaking was far removed than his usual joking self when he mentioned killing, but this time it felt like he meant it. He could kill me at any time. So, you got any questions? I suppose I can answer one. Um, I desperately searched for the words. Why did the Shinsengumi get involved in something like this? Well, our job is to crack down on L.L. Ronin, but... You know that doing so isn't some walk in the park, right? Yeah? Among the Ronin, there are plenty that are actually skilled swordsmen. When I was on rounds, I saw many such men fighting and dueling amongst themselves. Well, when we started out, we were really short on men. Our reputation was crap, and we couldn't pay well either. Anyway, we didn't have many people asking to join, and those that did were pretty disappointing. Well, that was when some guy from the Shogunate showed up and offered to make us part of this experiment. An experiment? That must have been what Sanam was referring to. So, you knew what the side effects were, and you still made them take it? Well, I didn't make them take it. It was their choice. You see, the Shinsengumi has this thing called the Rules of Conduct. Just so you don't get all confused, it's a set of rules we employ to keep everyone in line. Usually, if you break our rules, we make you cut yourself open. Seppuku. Cut yourself open? Uh, why are you so surprised? The only way a warrior can own up to something is by cutting themselves open. <sighs> Traditionally, when samurai disgraced themselves, they drove their swords into their bellies. I thought such traditions were obsolete, and that now the worst they do is pretend to cut themselves open with a fan. You get it, right? If they're gonna die anyways, don't you think it makes more sense for them to save some face? And take it into their own hands? For these guys, we gave them a choice. Kill yourself or drink the Shogun's concoction. You get it. Don't you feel bad for them? <sighs> I couldn't think of anything to say. What sort of choice was that? Death by your own hand or madness and death by someone else's? That men I encountered that winter night, had their last thoughts as men been hoped they might survive the madness? It sounded horrible. Something that makes you strong and hard to kill should be really great, right? In actuality, though, they ended up being a piece of cake. We could easily kill them all. In a moment, I was taken back to that fateful night when Okita dispatched the warriors with white hair without any effort. I wonder what's going to happen to Sanin. I was worried, too. Was Sanin okay? Would he... change? My stomach was twisting itself into knots. And so, the long night broke. The captains of the Shinsengumi gathered in the common room. Okay, everyone, don't worry. The hardest part for him is over. The room collectively breathed a sigh of relief. So, how is Sanin? He's still asleep. Looks pretty peaceful. So, has Sanin gone crazy like the others? Inoue simply shook his head. We won't know for sure until he wakes up. For now, he looks just like he always has. Suddenly then, the door slid open. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing? Oh, crap. Ito. Well, that wasn't the warm welcome I expected. My, my. You all look rather glum. Well, isn't it obvious that it's because we have to see your face in the morning? <laughs> Just straight out with it. My, Nagakura, darling. You are such a jokester. Ito dismissed Nagakura's snide remark, and he turned to face the standing warriors. Come now. Why the long faces, everyone? It has to do with the happenings of last night, I presume. Uh, no, um... Desperately, Kondo's eyes flew around the room, as if looking for someone to offer an excuse. Zano, make something up! Why him? What? Me? Uh, well, you see, yesterday... You're a miserable actor. Keep your mouth shut. How about you leave the explaining to someone who can string two words together, huh? Okita turned to Saito expectantly, and the latter spoke up at once. As you may have heard, Deputy Commander Ito, an incident occurred last night at headquarters. My, an incident, you say? Yes. However, we have yet to assume a real grasp on the situation. An attempt to make an explanation now is a risk of confusion from inaccurate information. 
If you wish, I would be happy to provide you with a more detailed report this afternoon. I see. I understand. Well, I shall look forward to receiving the details this evening. Well then, good day. Ito brandished another strange smile, stood, nodded, and left the room promptly. Seems like it left us off easy. What do you mean? Ito has his wits about him. We shouldn't have let him see all of us together. The only man missing was Sanin. It won't take Ito long to realize something happened to him. Oh. Ito had likely guessed at what took place, but decided not to press the issue. I had looked up just in time to see Sanin shuffle through the door. Sanin! Hey, come on, guys. Don't stare at me like I'm some kind of monster. Sanin, are you sure you should be up on a belt? I'm only a little drained, sore. A side effect of my new... condition, I suppose. Those who have taken the draught often find activity during daylight hours to be especially taxing. Sanin looked a little pale, but it didn't look too difficult for him to stand and speak. But if it's hard for him to move during the day... I am no longer a human being. Those words sunk our hearts heavily. Even the captains fell silent to a solemn admission. Oh, Sanin, who cares what you are? You're alive. That's good enough for me. Kondo stood and grabbed Sanin's shoulders tightly, his expression bright and endearing. Tears nearly welled in his beaming eyes. Oh, Kondo is such a sweetheart. So, how's your arm? Has it healed? I haven't fully recovered yet, so I would withhold any final judgment, but... He lifted his left arm, the arm that before had hung limp at his side, and flexed his hand. It didn't look any different than before his injury. It seems to have been healed. At the very least, it is no longer a hindrance. Thank goodness! In spite of the chaos from last night, his wish to use his arm once more came true. However... You can't go out in the sun though, right? Will you still be able to fight with us? His voice was calm, almost careless. I have an idea. Tell everyone I died. What? From now on, I will serve the Corps to remind them and us that success is possible. Sonnen, have you lost your mind? Do you know what you're saying? Of course I do. Do you, Nakakura? The Shogun had ordered us to keep this thing a secret. If I, uh, die, the Shogun its secret remains so. Besides, considering the possibilities of the side effects being managed or even removed, what reason do we have not to use it? They seemed to be against Sanin's idea, though no one said anything. Who would want to consign a friend to live a life of secrecy lived in the shadows? But... We were given this task by the Shogun himself. I suppose this is our only choice. Well, this is what you asked for, Sanin. And besides, you're not the type to listen either. Why can't he just make up that he's got a new role and he has to work at nights from now on? You know me well, don't you? You couldn't have been more accurate. Hijikata scoffed at Sanin's suggestion, and bitterness frothed from his words. This means moving to a new location isn't something we can manage to put off any longer. If we're going to hide Sanin from Ito and his men, we need more space. This place won't cut it. I agree. If we intended to begin research again, then a move is even more urgent. All right, everyone. Even though none of you got much sleep, we need to attend to business. Yukimura, you go back to your room. I know you didn't sleep much. Okay, understood. Please excuse me. I bowed to everyone and left the common room. I'm happy that Sanin was safe, but a whole flurry of new concerns arose. Learning of my father's horrible work. What will become of me? Will I be safe? Such thoughts buzzed heavily in my head as I walked back to my room. June, 1865 June, 1865 Our emperor had passed, and our year moved from the second of Ganji to the first of Keo. It was three months since we moved to the headquarters in Nishi Hongwanji. There's a lot more room, but... More room meant, well, farther to walk. More exercise. I'd walk through it almost every day for weeks, and I was finally beginning to learn my way around. 
As I turned a corner near the back of the compound, I caught sight of someone sitting in the shadows. There you are, Sonnen. Your food's ready. Oh, hello. Thank you. The snow disappeared, the cherry blossoms bloomed and fled, and now the swallows and the heat come. Sonnen and I exchanged a pair of smiles, and I held out my hands to let the breeze brush across them. It's really gotten warm lately. Yes, it has. Unfortunately, the increased sunshine has been more pleasant for me than the heat. Really? I didn't think the sun was particularly strong that day, but to Sanin, who hid in the shadows and out of sight during the day, it must have been unbearable. But to Sanin... The night he... changed, Sanin's hair turned white, and in his eyes was a thirst for blood. <sighs> but looking at his peaceful smile now made it hard to imagine such a night was real. If someone told me it was all a bad dream, I would have believed it. It wasn't a dream, though, and now Sanan spends his days hiding from the sunlight and from others. <sighs> For just a moment, the sun lit on Sanan's hair. Ah! I don't know if it was a trick of the light or simply my mind being foolish, but in that moment, his hair was a brilliant white. Is something the matter? You look as though you've seen a ghost, which I hardly feel is polite. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, n no, nothing at all. He looked perfectly normal now, of course. Surely, I thought, I must have simply imagined it. Even if I had, there was no denying that he was the same man who went mad with bloodlust. The fear of the night cast a shadow over my heart. It was unnerving. Heisuke and I made our way through the crowded as usual streets of Kyoto at a brisk pace. You know, I haven't gone out on patrol with you in quite a while, Heisuke. Huh? Oh yeah, I guess not. Edo had me pretty busy. So, how was it while I was gone? Shin and Sano didn't bug you while I was gone, did they? Everything was fine, and they were kind to me. Ah, oh, that's good. So, any updates on your dad? Did you find any leads? None at all. Ah, oh, I see. I stopped by your old place in Edo with the information you gave me, but... Well... There was no sign of anyone returning. Seriously, I wonder where he went. The somberness of Heisuke's expression started to rub off on me. Now I was depressed. Oh, thank you for taking the time to look anyway. There's nothing to thank me for. I mean, the fact that you're not allowed to come and go as you please is completely our fault. Heisuke? Heisuke stopped himself mid-sentence, which was jarring. Ever since he returned from Edo, he's looked glum. Hey, Heisuke! How about you? It's been a while since you were in Kyoto. Does it seem different from Edo? Hmm, well, I sort of feel like the town has changed. So have the people. Huh? I wonder what was going through his head. Did something happen to him in Edo? His sudden change of character confused me. Hmm? Heisuke's head jerked up slightly, and he looked across the street. He stood on his toes and waved. Hey, Soji! Find anything over there? No, nope, everything's normal. Okito was out on patrol as well, although his route took him through a different part of the city. Well, normal for now at least. I'm not sure things will pick up once the Shogun gets here. The Shogun's coming to visit Kyoto? Yep. And it's got Kondo all worked up, too. Kondo truly respects Shogun Iemochi. Ah, oh, I see. I hope it turns out well. Right, Heisuke? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I bet he is. Huh? Something had really gotten into him. And we'll see if we can find out what's gotten into him in the next episode, because we got to stop there. And I just say, that we are still on the common route? Maybe in Chapter 4 we'll be on an actual route. I don't know, might not actually be till Chapter 5. I can't remember, I just know it's pretty long. But I totally feel like we should have been trying to... talk to Sanin a lot more and be friendly with him this whole time, but, you know... But, ah, uh, what can you do? You can only do what the game lets you do. So, I hope to see you in that next episode or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. 
and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>